Before we get started, I just want to thank everyone for 100 subscribers. Now let's get back to the video. Let's talk about the distance between two points. If you have a coordinate plane like this, and you have two points on it, like these two, and you're asked to find the distance between them, how would you do that? Well, you could simply draw a line segment connecting both points, and then you could count how many units you need to go from this point to the other point. So in this case, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can tell that this line is 6 units long, and that means the points are separated by 6 units. And that's the distance between them. Pretty simple. But what if you have two points that are plotted like this, the one shown here connected by the blue line segment? Well, this isn't as straightforward because while we can still connect both points, we can't just find the length of this line segment because it's slanted. So for cases like this, we use a special formula which I'll give you right now. So this is the formula that gives the distance between any two points connected by a line segment on a coordinate plane. First of all, we can see here that there are placeholders for the x and y components of the two coordinates that we're connecting and we're trying to find the distance between. Now you might notice that there's an order here where we have x1 minus x2 and y1 minus y2. So it seems like the order must matter where we have to subtract the second ordered pair from the first ordered pair. But in reality, this doesn't matter much because the answer is squared, which means that even if we did x2 minus x1 for this first part right here, and then we did y1 minus y2 for the second part right here, we would still get the same answer because a negative would just be canceled out by the squared part. Many teachers will tell you to follow this order where you consistently subtract one ordered pair from another ordered pair without switching them, and you really should, but I'm just letting you know that even if you don't, it doesn't make a difference in your final answer. So knowing that, let's try an example. Let's say I ask you to find the distance between ordered pairs 2, 7, and 3, 9. Take a second to pause the video and figure this out on your own. When you're ready, resume the video and let's go through it together right now. So let's make this our first ordered pair and this one our second one. So now let's go ahead and plug things in. So we have x1 minus x2. x1 is going to be 2 and x2 is going to be 3. So we have 2 minus 3 squared. And then adding y1 minus y2 squared y1 is going to be 7 and y2 is going to be 9. So we have 7 minus 9 squared. Now we know 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So what we can actually do is erase this and just put a negative 1 in here. And then we know 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So we could do the same thing here, put a negative 2 inside. Now negative 1 squared is 1. So I can actually just erase this whole thing and put a 1 here. And then negative 2 squared is 4. Remember, the negatives go away because when you're squaring, you're multiplying with each other. So the negative times a negative becomes a positive. So once again, the negative 2 squared is a 4. And so now we have 1 plus 4. And 1 plus 4, obviously, is 5. So we're going to put a 5 here. And there you go. That's our answer. The distance between the coordinates 2, 7, and 3, 9 is the square root of 5. So I mentioned before that you could actually switch one of the ordered pairs and not switch the other one and you would still get the same answer. In other words, the order doesn't really matter. And I just want to prove that to you just in case you do get lost or you don't remember and you do have to resort to not using the order, you would still get the same answer. So let's say we're going to use for the first part we did 2 minus 3 squared. So this time, let's do 3 minus 2 squared. And then, once again, we're going to keep the 7 minus 9 squared. Because remember, we're only mixing up the order for one ordered pair. So now we have 3 minus 2, which we know is 1. And 1 squared is just 1. So we can just take that whole thing away, and we're left with 1. And now you might notice that this is the same thing we got last time. Except last time, we had negative 1 squared, which again works out to be the same answer. So... Now we're adding 7 minus 9 squared, which we know to be negative 2 squared. 
and negative 2 squared is simply 4, like we did before. And again, we have the same thing, 1 plus 4, which we know is 5. So once again, we have the same answer, square root of 5. So as you can see, it doesn't really matter which order we're using. But again, teachers will tell you to stick to one order so that you're consistent throughout your work and so that you can avoid mistakes. So now let's start doing some more practice problems. Let's say you're given the coordinates 13, 4, and 6, negative 2. And you're asked to find the distance between these two points. Let's go ahead and try solving this using this new formula that we have. And if you want to pause this video and try figuring this out on your own, go ahead and do that. When you're ready, resume the video. So we're going to go ahead and work through this example together. I'm going to treat the first ordered pair as ordered pair number one and the second ordered pair as ordered pair number two. And they'll stay consistent throughout this video, so I won't mention that again. Anyway, let's start plugging in our terms into this equation. So if the first part is x1 minus x2, we know that that's going to be 13 and 6, respectively. So what we can do is simply put in 13 minus 6 squared right here. Okay, the next part is going to be y1 minus y2, and those numbers are 4 and negative 2, respectively. So if we do 4 minus negative 2, the two negatives cancel out. So it's actually 4 plus 2. So we can just write that in, and that gives us 4 plus 2 squared. Now let's start solving. Let's go back to the x term. So we have 13 minus 6, and 13 minus 6 is obviously 7. So we have 7 squared right there. Now let's go to the y part, 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, so we have 6 squared. Now let's start squaring. 7 squared is simply 7 times 7, which is 49. And 6 squared is simply 6 times 6, which is 36. So we have 49 plus 36. And if we add those two up, we get 85. So we have square root of 85. Now, something that I didn't mention in the last example, because it didn't apply there, is that we do need to check to make sure that this term, this whole square root of 85, we need to make sure that it's simplified. In other words, if there's any perfect square that we can factor out, we should do that to make sure it's in the most simplified form possible. So in this case, let's look at 85. Is there any perfect square that we can factor out of 85? It doesn't seem so, because if we look at the most common ones, we have 4, 9, and 25. So those represent 2, 3, and 5 for their perfect squares. And it doesn't seem any of those can be factored out of 85. So let's go ahead and just say that square root of 85 is our final answer. Okay, so now let's do one more practice problem, and this one's going to be a little bit harder. So for this one, you're going to figure out the distance between the points negative 2, negative 5, and 8, negative 7. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers into our formula that we have above. So first we have x1 minus x2 squared. x1 and x2 are represented by the numbers negative 2 and 8 respectively. So we can simply write negative 2 minus 8 squared in here. Next we have y1 minus y2 squared. And those numbers are negative 5 and negative 7 respectively. So we have negative 5 minus negative 7. Now remember, when you have minus a negative number, it actually becomes plus that number itself. So you have minus negative 7, which simply becomes plus 7. So we'll just write that in from the get-go. So you have negative 5 plus 7 squared right there. Now let's start working through the heavy math part of this stuff. We have negative 2 minus 8 squared right over here. So negative 2 minus 8 is simply negative 10. So we have negative 10 squared. Now when you have a negative squared, like you have right here, the negative times the negative simply goes away because negative times negative is a positive, And we don't write the positive. So we have 10 times 10. So that's simply 100. So we can just replace this whole term with 100. 
Next, on the other side, for the y part, we have negative 5 plus 7 squared. The internals, the negative 5 plus 7, well, we know that's 2 because 7 minus 5 or negative 5 plus 7, they both work out to be the same thing. So 2. So we have 2 squared, and 2 squared is very easy. That's simply 2 times 2, so that's 4. So we can erase this whole thing and simply put in a plus 4. So now we have 100 plus 4, and that's pretty easy as well because that's just 104. So our answer is square root of 104, but not quite yet because remember, we still have to do that one last step, which is checking to make sure that this is the most simplified version of the answer that we can get. And if we look here, automatically it seems to me that this number is uh, it's divisible by 4 because there does seem to be a 4 in it, which indicates that it might be possible. So let's take a look. Is 104 divisible by 4? If we divide by 4, we see that it actually is because 104 divided by 4 is 26. And this number, 26, is a whole number, which means that 4 does go perfectly into 104. So if we work this out, we can say that the square root of 104 is simply the square root of 4 times 26, right? Because we proved that 104 divided by 4 is 26. Now what we can do is separate those terms like this. And we know the square root of 4 is 2. So we can replace this whole term right here with a 2. And that gives us our final answer, which is simply 2 times the square root of 26. And that's the distance between the points negative 2, negative 5, and 8, negative 7. So that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you want to. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Now I do know that some of my videos are marked as made for kids and so that doesn't allow you to comment. In that case, you can just comment on any other video that does have the comment section available and I'll make sure to reply to your comment as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.